about making wine? Our next guest is here to give us a crash course. We're calling it Wine Making 101. Justin Ovi from Arizona Stronghold, a winery that's local here to Arizona out by mm -hmm. Verde Valley, right? That's right. Yep. Welcome back, by the way. All right, so I'm pretty jazzed about this segment because, um, you know, wine, uh, who, who thought that you could make your own wine? Exactly. That's the whole thing. We all buy wine, or wine drinkers buy wine, but you can make your own wine at home. Um, you just need a few, a few simple tools. You need so, a few things, absolutely. First thing you're going to want to do is pick out what you want to make wine out of. You may or may not know, you can make wine out of virtually anything. Any fruit, any vegetable. Yes, apples, pomegranate, bananas. There's garlic, garlic in here. Are you, yes, why, why would you absolutely. want to put garlic in your wine? Um, you know, if you were making a wine to go with pasta, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Well, a lot of these things, though, with big flavors, will get really subdued after fermentation. So it's the the garlic wine is not going to taste really garlicky. Uh, the banana wine is not going to taste really banana-y. Uh, you can also use dried herbs. This is dried hibiscus flower. If Ooh. you want to add a floral quality to your wine, this is passion flower here. Uh -huh. um, I like using honey in my wines that I make at home rather than just sugar because honey can add a, a floral characteristic to it as well. You can smell and taste the honey in the wine even if it's a dry wine. Yeah, and you probably shouldn't just throw anything in a, bu in a big bucket, right? I mean, this is, this is actually kind of a cool book right here. It's Wine Making 101 with some great recipes. Precisely. So. I mean, this okay. is the crash course. This yeah. is a snapshot of how to do it. Get a book, go online, do both, research as much as you can because there's a lot of little details between these steps we're going to go over. Okay, so, so before you get started, once you get the ingredients down, you're going to need a couple of tools. You're going to need a big bucket like this. Big bucket, yep. And a big uh, container like this. Big bucket's the technical term for this. We like to call it the uh, primary fermentation tank, though, oh, in layman term. <laughs> exactly. Big bucket is great, though. Big bucket and then glass jar. So this is primary fermentation tank. You're going to chop up your fruit, your herbs, your garlic, whatever you want to put in here to make your wine. You're going to add your sugar and your yeast, and all your fermentation is going to happen right here initially. Okay, and that takes about a week usually. Okay, so once you put all of that in there, you let it sit for mm -hmm. six, seven days. Then you do what? Um, then you're going to rack or move to your secondary fermentation tank. Now, at home, this would be the equivalent to an oak barrel. A lot of home winemakers like to use a glass carboy because they're not as expensive as an oak barrel and they last your entire life. Mm -hmm. So when you get in, really into making wine at home, maybe you'll move up to an oak barrel, but this is a great place to start. They're really easy to clean and they're really easy to use. So you would get your siphon tube and you would siphon out of your primary. Actually, for a primary, you can dump it right into a funnel like so. Okay, so you so dump the, your the fruit. fruit the, the, everything that's in there is going to now go in here. Will it exactly. Stick? So all your juice is going to go in there. You're going to want to right. strain the fruit out of it. So the fruit stays, all the, the pulp, the must, all that, the pumice is what they call it, stays there. The big all the juice goes in here. Okay. When the juice goes in here, though, uh, like for white wine, you can really see it. When they make white wine, the wine is really, really cloudy, mm -hmm. and you want that to settle. You want it to clarify, and that's all you're doing. Okay. Wine making is, is hurry up and wait. So. so then once it's all settled, you're going to see a big layer. You'll see like about here, an inch right? or two down here, exactly. Okay. It'll and all then... settle. This will be nice and clear up here. You stick that back in there. Take this little contraption That's here, right. and you're then gonna you're going to siphon it from here to here. Back into your original container, okay. uh, unless you have a bunch of these or whatever. Then you're going to clean all that sediment out. Clean that out, get it nice and clean, sanitize this container, then put this back in here for okay. further clarification. When you okay. see like unfined, unfiltered wines, all that means is that they let gravity do the job. This is an airlock, so this actually keeps the wine from getting oxidized. We fill this with a little bit of water and that protects us from getting oxygen. So when I say gravity is going to do the work for right. clarification, that's exactly what's happening. We're just letting those heavy particles settle down to the bottom, and then we go to the bottle. Is this how you make wine, really? I mean, out at, out at Arizona Stronghold? The differences between home winemaking and how we get to this bottle at our winery are minimal. Really? I mean, it's essentially all the same basics are exactly the same. That Absolutely. is really cool. Now, and, and just, just so you know that there's some other ingredients, I mean, not just the, uh, you know, the fruit and the herbs and things like that, but there are a few other ingredients that you have to put in, and that's why it's really important to uh, do your research online. Get a recipe. Okay. Absolutely. All right. And then, and then you got to get a cool tool like this so that you that's can That's the hand corker. And that's make right. your own decorative labels and give them out as holiday Absolutely. gifts. Absolutely. Justin, thank you so much. Arizona Stronghold, we have all the information um, on our website, Sonoran Living.
Com. All right, Steph, you know what? It, it does kind of compare. I already told him about my Uncle Chet's raspberry hooch. So. Oh, that's right, the raspberry hooch. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength over here. What was here. that, about two months ago that you had some of that? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And Justin was jealous. He was, was like, <laughs> I can only imagine what that raspberry hooch tasted like. I just like to hear you say raspberry hooch. <laughs>